and uh, I'm Rick alongside Kevin. And uh, this is a show where we talk about all kind of stuff, uh, especially entertainment and sports related stuff, because that's our thing. That's what we like. And uh, this is episode number 83. We are 83 feet, Kev. Do you think we're going to last that long? I think we're going to get past 15. So 83 is like a month of miracle. Pretty much. Pretty much. Hey, the shows we ain't got ADD or nothing. We're focused. Something like that. And uh, you and I talked prior to uh, recording, so we know that it's only going to get better. Yes. We're trying to make it to that century mark. Oh, we're going to get that. We'll get that. You know, we'll, we're on a little hiatus, and we'll come back, and we'll hit that with no problem. Oh, yeah. All right, so, um, bro, have, did you see all the movie trailers in college? Oh, uh, the movie trailers? Yeah. Nah, I've seen a couple. Um, I may have seen trailers on Netflix. There's a lot of stuff coming to Netflix that ain't going to theaters that look good, because The Rock got a movie with, um... Oh, my red nose. Yeah, that looked good. Those. That looked good. That yeah, looks that real one, good. That one does look good. Yeah, they got my my baby mom in the movie. Who? Who? You said what? Who that? Uh, that, that one Gail chick. If I decide to have another kid, it's gonna be with her. Oh, okay. Hey, because she can afford it, so you know. Um. Okay, so the Doom trailer, the final trailer dropped. Don't know how familiar you are with that movie. Uh, the uh, previous iterations of Doom, this will actually be the third time this movie. And this what movie, movie is it? Good. It's called Doom. Doom. Didn't Rock do a version that was trash? No. Now this, uh, the last one that would have been done, I think, would have been. But uh, this one's got Jason Momoa in it, uh, Oscar Isaac. Got quite a few stars. Dave Batista is in it. Mm. I'm at the pond. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be so, pretty good. Is that actually going to theaters, or is that going to be streaming? From what I hear, it will start off in theaters for the first week, and then HBO Max will pick it up. Well, I'm good, and thanks my high ass cell phone bill. I have HBO Max. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, you you'll be able to see that. Um, you know, all you gotta do let me know. I'll send you this, I'll shoot you whatever. They had two interesting teasers, also uh, a really brief one for the Flash movie. And yes, Michael Keaton will be wearing his Batman suit and Flash. Yeah, who's um, playing Flash? The same one that played him in Justice League. Oh, well, I didn't pay that trash no attention. So, hey, you never know. You watch that. Uh, now, I'll say that the uh, original Justice League movie was kind of trash, but if you look at the Zack Snyder cut, damn good movie. And you, you I could watch it over. Now, it's four hours long, but, you know. Yeah, I, I refuse to rewatch it over. I was like, i seen it. Eh, should have did it then. Uh, another uh, teaser that dropped, this is Run Up the Rock, Black Adam. That looks like it might be good. I'm bothered by the name Black Adam, so I'm still working on getting past that part. Are you going to protest? I ain't going to protest. I'm just bothered by the name. All right. And uh, the big trailer that uh, dropped that everybody wanted to see was the Batman. The what? The Batman. And I guess I missed Batman's trailer. trailer. The more I see Batman trailers, the more I think this is going to actually be a good one. When it was first announced, and they said who was going to play him, I'm like, this movie doesn't have a chance in hell. They had the teaser at the beginning of this year, and then they had uh, a trailer that dropped a couple days ago. Yeah. This I thought Ben Affleck was playing Batman. No. No, he's been out of the role. Uh, this is going to be played by, God, what is his name? He, he's, he played the vampire in those Twilight movies. Yeah, I didn't watch Twilight, so I, I'm not gay. I didn't watch that. I didn't watch it either, but uh, that's the only place I know him from. I actually, I take it back. Um, what was that movie, Tenet, that came out a few months back? Uh, I kept trying to watch that and kept falling asleep on it. Well, he's the so guy. So basically, that man's white again is what you're telling me. Has, has he ever not been? He, today's movie, he could be a heterosexual, he could be a hermaphrodite or something, you know. 
He does not know what he'll Don't let me get started on the Superman thing. Hmm. As a matter of fact, I will get started on the Superman thing. You did hear about that, right? I thought old boy's coming back. Uh, Henry, no, no, whatever his name is. comic books. Oh, uh, the comic book, yeah, he come back, what? Uh, his son is uh, bisexual or whatever? Yes. Or transgender, some shit like that? He can't complete in the Olympics. Do we really Those... have to push the agenda that far? Yep. Jeez. For some reason, they just, I don't know why. Everything got to be. I'm sorry, could you speak up? I couldn't hear you after you said please. Oh, okay. Your bigot ass coach. You know, for some reason. Hey, they Rich just... Pisaccia is not a bigot. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what we with now. But, you know, I just want to say for a second. The reason why John Gruden had to leave is because Chucky was getting started. He had to do a press run. That, that's why he left. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to him in a minute. But, uh, all right. James Bond came out last week. And everybody's talking about pushing the agenda. Why do we have to have a female 007? Superman comes out as bisexual. Why do we have to push the agenda? I am a firm believer, and, and this goes hand in hand with the uh, that talk about uh, having Superman be played by a black person next time they make a movie. Why? If Superman is white, let it let it be. If we want a black superhero, let's create a black superhero, or let's make a movie based on one that's already there. Marvel did it with Black Panther. Did a damn good job on it. So don't say it can't be done. See, the want thing a is... Or a transgender superhero, Find one that's already gay or transgender, or or or. Because apparently there are some in the comic book world that we just don't know about. Exactly. So My, I get here, here, here's the thing. This is a white man's version of reparation, letting everything be ethnic all of a sudden. Instead of giving us forty acres and a mule, we're gonna give you a black Superman to make you feel good about yourself. As if handyman wasn't good enough on a living color. They just they disrespectful. They they just hella disrespectful. Now, I'm not gonna say it's. Always a bad thing. I'm a big fan of Battlestar Galactica and Starbuck. Starbuck works as a woman. It really does. What Magnum like, PI. Magnum PI. You call it SAPI. Puerto Rican PI. Yeah. It works. So it can work, but it doesn't have to always be so. Yeah, because um, what is I saw where, uh, well, what I think. If they do a third, no, third, uh, if they do another triple X, I know it's going to be a female. It, it's not going to, you're not going to see Ice Cube. You're not going to see Vin, uh, Vin Diesel. It's going to be a female. So it, right now, everything is female or everything is black or Latino. That's just what's going on right now. So you just kind of got to expect it or it's the sexuality is questionable. It's like but those you know four what? things. If it's almost like they, they playing Yahtzee and they got dice in a cup and they rolling it on the table. I'm like, okay, this is this. This is it. This is what we're going with. Write a script. But here's the thing, though. If that happened in Triple X, I wouldn't mind it because in the first two movies, you had a different hero. In yeah. the third one, you can have a different one. That's fine. It's not like they're remaking Triple X and turning it into a one. Well, they kind of are in a way, but I get what you're saying. It's like it's not the the main character isn't the fabric. It's just being a triple X is the fabric of the movie. Yeah. As long as we still get burnt up Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, Samuel and Danny everything. So hey. hey. My thing is when they make another one of these uh movies that are about my childhood, they're like the Thundercat movie ever happened, or they do Transformer again, or another GI, which I hope they at some point, to get a GI Joe movie right. Just don't change the characters in that. Let let it be successful before you tinker with it. Well, I think that's why they put that Snake Eyes movie out a few months ago to see if people still cared about GI Joe. I don't know one person that went to see it. They dropped the ball on it horribly. Um, there is another Transformer movie in the works. Just a heads up. I hope it's shorter than the last one because last one was good. But me and Jaya was like, damn, we still got time in this bitch. That mother was about three hours long. I don't know, man. If 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 you have to look at your watch during a movie, the movie's not that good, is it? 
No, it was good, but it was just like at some point you get tired of sitting. I don't know. Avengers Endgame game was three hours. Never once looked at the watch. Oh, and it just even in Endgame and the uh, whatever the last one was, some I always saw there's like 20, 30 minutes you can cut out of a movie where it just kind of gets dragged. In the Transform movie, that was about 20 minutes they could have cut out. That whole shit with Anthony Hopkins telling this story or whatever, that shit could have got cut out. Well, you better than me because I didn't see the last two Transformers movies. Oh, you tripping. That that one before the last one? Transformers series has been good overall. It, it's been a good series. If you need those in your collection, movie guy. I got the first three. You need the whole collection. I'm going to need them to come up with something different. Just that, never that, enough these Negroes. That plot's always the same. Autobots versus Decepticons. Autobots. Oh, wow. Okay. It's never okay. enough for the Negroes. It, it isn't. Speaking of, it's not enough for the L.A. County uh, court. They uh, filed a motion for uh, Vanessa Bryant to get a psychiatric evaluation to prove that leaked photos caused her emotional distress. And those photos were of the helicopter crash of her husband, a one Kobe Bryant. All right. I see both sides of it. The court's got to do its job because obviously it's money on the line. But I don't know who will say or can say that she wasn't emotionally distressed. That was her husband. And you're going to see a downed helicopter knowing the bodies were in there. How could it not? emotionally damage her? That's my question. I get where the course is coming from. They're basically trying to discredit her. That's all they're trying to do. They're trying to discredit her so they ain't got to pay her out. All said and done. Because if she get that payday, them kids are set. Granted, they're already set, but they kids are going to be set for life. Because that's going to be a fat payday. That to they'll be probably honest, if she wanted the kids set, all she had to do was sign the damn Nike contract. She blew that. But that's another story. God, there you. With the Nike contract, I think Nike wasn't going to let her be in the driver's seat of his shoe. And well, they were just about to just take over. She shouldn't be in the in, in the driver's seat. That's too nah, you can't ask me to bring his likeness and everything about him, keep it here, but you don't give me a voice. Have you seen the newest uh, NBA commercial? They used his likeness. Oh, the NBA should go. brick wall. No, the NBA go use it because, hell, she still gets, uh, she probably gets his retirement check. So, I mean, that's, they own that. But I will say, though, and I, it's ironic you bring up Kobe. I'm getting tired of all this Kobe stuff again. Did you see the picture of Candace Parker after she won her championship? I did not. I'm, I'm not sending it. I'm not sending it. You can put it up on here. Does she have her so, single sleeve on? Because it is sleeve season. No, so apparently. No, nah, so. Since, hold on, I just got a big one. Make sure everything is cool. Okay, so here's the thing. She won apparently two years, two or three years ago. She was voted the most overrated player in the WNBA right now. She was playing with the Sparks. They wasn't doing nothing. I can see why, but she was getting all that attention. So magically, she gets MVP the following year, then defensive player of the year, and now she wins a championship, brings it to Chicago when they first won. So she's looking like a gladiator right now. You know the infamous Kobe pitcher when they won the championship, when he's sitting in his leather coat, hugging the trophy, yeah. guy went to Kobe with the fro or whatever. Right. This mofo takes a picture with the trophy and a bottle in a black leather coat, sitting in a chair, trying to have a bewildered look like Kobe. And I said, this is damn sick. This is just unnecessary. Bad enough you wearing his Adidas from when he first wore Adidas. Now you want to plagiarize the picture like you, Kobe? You're not Kobe. 
you're Candace Parker. Be Candace Parker. Just, just be yourself. Look, like I'm, I'm just, I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired of all this. Um, man, we want to talk about athletes, our show that we love. I had some problems with it. I am athlete. All right, you know they dropped two episodes this week. One with uh, Rohan Marley and then the whole Jod Root situation. And you asked mm-hmm. me, has I Am Athlete gone Hollywood? When you look at their feed on YouTube and you look at these last two episodes, yeah, they have. Now, I'm not going to say anything negative because if the same thing were to happen to us. I'm partying. I'm, we I'm, I'm selling out. <laughs> I'm selling the fuck out. Exactly. So I, I get that. I really do. But I wasn't impressed by either of the two episodes. Um, the Marley one just lost me completely. Um, and A, because it was hard to keep up with him trying to tell a story. Uh, it took a little too long to get certain parts out. And so, uh, so no, no, I got what he was. I got what he was saying. It's just my thing is I give Brandon Marshall great he's entrepreneur. He got that mindset. But let it grow. You ain't got to stretch it all over. Like I watched the women one too. It's not bad. Um, That's all you, bro. I, you know, I like podcasts. So, and besides, you know, his wife is my baby mama. She just don't know yet. So, you know, Wouldn't that I watch. Like with Gal Gadot? Hey, you know, you got to have one in the States, one out the States, you know. So you just going full on Nick Cannon then? <laughs> hey, I'm a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this when I decide I want to go out for some cigarettes, <laughs> you know, you got to have somewhere to go. Okay, but in addition to that episode, I think the uh, one with uh, Chad Johnson, excuse me, Coach Cinco, talking mm-hmm. about the uh, current NFL situation with 65, uh, 650,000 emails, that episode was too short. There's yeah, so I think that was just that something that they felt they had to speak on it. And I think more is to come. It looked like they had like a forum or something going. So I'm expecting more to come from that. Because see, the problem with I Am Athlete, where they used to be somewhat live, now they're pre-taped and they're just, here's one for this week, here's one for that week. And they're trying. To, they're starting to be like everybody else, which takes away from the essence of the show to where you was recording weekly versus being a couple weeks, you know, having a couple of them in the in the barrel or whatever. So, I, you know, that, that kind of sucks or whatever. But I get they got so many different moving parts and he building so many I am athlete facilities, which looks state of the art in the motherfucker. It's just he's taken away from it. And I can't be mad at it because there's money to be made out there. Go on ahead and get it. That's my motto. There's plenty for everyone. Um, you just can't forget that old adage in entertainment and sports as well. Those who make you can also break you. So I just think that uh, don't take it too far too fast. But oh, yeah, I, I feel again, you. Man. If, if, if it would happen to us, I would change things. I, I, I told you, I'm I selling the fuck out. Things. I'm selling the fuck out. Uh, side I'm going to be A. Somebody hit us up. Uh, on the uh, email uh, last week about doing a uh, sponsorship for some product. Mm -hmm. I've got an automated message that goes back to people for that. And it explains that we do not purchase anything. If you want to send us something, we'd be more than happy to uh, review or talk about it. Yeah, wait on my manscapes to come. (laughs) They, they, They won't reply back because they want us to purchase things. Oh, of course. Yeah, and if you want us to purchase anything, just letting everybody know if you're listening and you have us in your sights, hey, we'll review anything. We'll talk about anything. We'll sell out, but the key word is sell, not buy. We're not purchasing anything. Help us help you. Anyway, back to uh, the I Am Athlete and the Ruben situation. Yeah, there's 650,000 emails. I'm upset with the NFL right now because if you've got that and you have what, we'll say 10, 15, whatever emails on Chucky, was he really the scapegoat? Because the NFL is adamant that 
they will not release any other emails. And every source around them says that you've got to. Do you think that they're going to release any more emails? See, the thing is, it's the equivalent of when you're an undercover cop and you infiltrate a drug, a drug situation. Do you want the bluegill or do you want the bass? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's one of the things to where Bruce Allen was on there, but Bruce Allen the bluegill. Because who knows about Bruce Allen? Could you pick him out in the lineup? Probably not. But the bass is John Gruden. So we right. go. But I beg to differ with you because this whole thing is against the Washington football team. True. I just happened to email Bruce Allen, who was the GM of the Washington football team. True. Daniel Snyder is the bass. But there's nothing on him. If there's right. nothing on him, Ooh. you go to the next biggest name. Next biggest name is Gruden. Remember, so there are allegations that females were uh, photographed of the shooting squad topless. Yeah. Like and I Gruden was involved Gruden. in that. Gruden was not involved in that. No, yes, he was. They said he was sending that. Well, they said he was a part of that whole chain or whatever. So no, you no, go no. to the, the only biggest way he thing. get a Washington football cheerleaders photograph, it would have to be sent from the Washington football team. That's true, but you're missing the point. You go to the biggest name. It's the equivalent of if you draft in a team, you get the best available player. You're looking, okay, nobody, nobody, no. Ah, oh, that's who we're gonna go after. It's no different than the R. Kelly situation or the Bill Cosby situation. Bill probably wasn't the only one doing that, but he was the biggest name. Or back when Lil Wayne's tour bus got pulled over and his manager said, that's my gun. No, it's not. It's Lil Wayne's gun. Why? Because Lil Wayne's the bigger name. You're going to go, it's all name. It's like the worst form of name recognition of all time. They're going to go after the name that's going to sell something which is papers, internet, you know, because as soon as this group name, everybody and their mama clicked in on it. Mom was going to pay football any attention. Oh, yeah, Grind, you, John Gruden did that. He did that. So I was like, because I know for like you and some others, because he's a writer, no, Gruden could be a Jets head coach and his name on there, they're still going to guard him because he has the bigger name. So, but at some point, the players' uh, union is going to press. To see who else. So I can't wait for that to happen. Here's my thing, though. We already know there's a whole bunch of who else's. The problem is, most of those who else's are GMs and owners. Oh, the are about to get crippled. Here's the thing, though. Who pays the commissioner's salary? The owners. The owners. That's the reason why he doesn't want those uh, emails released. Because it could cost him big time. No, it ain't going to cost the commissioner because here, because here, here's another telltale. All they say he has nothing to do with it. Big dude who goes around knocking on doors for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. He just up and retired. Yeah, he did. Out the clear blue. A couple days ago. Clear blue. No, no, there's no sign on nothing. Just I've decided to retire effective immediately. They're trying to say, oh, no, he has nothing to do with it. The hell he doesn't. So I think they, but at the same time, who knows his fucking name? I know his name to the day. So they're sniffing around. And it's one of the things where, let me get out of Dodge for Dodge getting me. So I think you're going to see some more possible early retirements or I've decided to step down. Well, I think the NFL Players Association will press on it. Mm -hmm. But the outside uh, law firm, that's handling this, they are really going to put the pressure on because this all stems towards the uh, Washington football team cheerleaders and uh, people inside the uh, organization that said that they've been done wrong by people in the organization. But so see, the sad part about that, on. though, so basically you're talking about broke, disenfranchised people. They're all going to want what? Money, yeah. So it's not it's not going to go far. That's why I'm putting on the players' union to do something. Because just like um, who is it? Bill Cosby. A uh, matter of fact, somebody wasn't a part of the whole suit. And what did they do? Now they civil suiting them 
so they can get theirs. Okay. Um, wow. Real quick, that thing you sent me, you owe me that video. That had mm -hmm. me in tears. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest, friend of the family for me. Been knowing him. We go back what about ten plus now, Reese? Man, long, longer than that. Man, I met, yeah. I met you. I met you when I was in high school. Yeah, so this this basically my motherfucking brother right here. Yeah, because me 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 and Brandy graduated together. So, yeah, yeah right. Met, that was in two thousand high school. Yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah. Awesome. like a over, over twenty years, bro. Right. <laughs> now, nigga, feel old. I'm about to go get ARP now. That just man. <laughs> so, um, everybody, y'all know I love music. So, basically, my brother right here. I'm acting like we rich and famous. I ain't going to give his actual government name. Reese Nichols. He's a rapper that I discovered late in the game. But when I discovered him, I fell in love with his artistic ability because he just raps. It don't have to be game, bang, all that. He just raps. When I seen him, because I always heard I had the CD and everything. We are like, oh, he local. Toss it in the back seat. <laughs> but when he was on the news, him and his boy B, and they was rapping with everybody else when they – we just, when everybody was getting into the whole verse or battling rap or whatever, when that whole run was going, I was like, damn, my nigga got bars. <laughs> and from that moment on, I've been a fan. He's been doing solo projects. You know what I mean? Every time I hit you up, hey, bro, that right there. <laughs> so he got a new album coming out. So I had to have him on here to tell us about it and out the gate. Just tell us why you love music so much and what, what made you start writing bars. I love music like a mofo, but I can't yeah. wait to save my life. I honestly, honestly, bro, it's like it's like crazy. My pops used to be a, D, a DJ. Okay. So he used to DJ parties all the time and stuff growing up. So I performed my first song at like five. Damn. Like at five years old, he, he, me, my bro, and one of my um one of our little friends, pops was like, I want y'all to perform. So we made a little song back then. So that's kind of where it started, like falling in love with music, mm -hmm. you know, just always because my pops, man, got stacks of records on records, man, at the house, man. So I always kind of been a fan of music, but it really like I really got into it probably like my sophomore year um, mm -hmm. in high school, maybe so, maybe junior year. And it was having a, um, a talent show. It was summer year, summer year in my sophomore before I was becoming a junior. They was having a talent show. We did this upper bound program um, up at Avila. So. They was having a talent show. My bro was like, man, let's hop in it, man. Let's let, let's do it. And I'm like, man, like I freestyled in the cafeteria and stuff like that before, just joking around. You know how you get in cafeteria, a couple people got some pens, pencils, beating on the table, making beats. And we all used to get around and freestyle. But this was the first time like I had to actually sit down and, and write something. Okay. And ever since then, man, I I, I just been on it. Like ever, ever since. So that was, I was probably like 15. And, and just been running with it ever since, man. All right, my bad. I bought the Reese's, my co host Richard. What's this up, is, Rich? How you doing? He, he run the show. I'm just a talking head for the show. He do it. <laughs> nice to meet you, my man. Nice to meet you. So, um, what's the name of the album that you got coming out? How many tracks what? are on it? And uh, are, are we gonna see uh, any kind of like videos? You know, everybody's on YouTube nowadays and everything, and yeah, yeah, out there. So, so, so the project I'm finishing up is called, it's called Evolve. Um, and I have, I haven't really made up my mind if I'm going to do two EPs, like drop one and a few months later, drop the rest or put one album together. I'm kind of trying to juggle between it. People, um, people's attention span ain't as long as it used to be. I was going to say do the EP. I go to yeah. EP. Now. So making that adjustment where I probably like drop a six song EP, then a couple of months later, drop the other six songs. So but it's titled Evolve, man. I'm, I'm looking probably late November, early December uh, to drop it. And it really Evolve just means what kind of what it is, man, just to kind of show growth. You know, I'm a real person that when I rap or I make music, it's going to be about life and where I'm at in life. So, um, you know, the last project I did called Hiatus talked about a lot of stuff that I went through over the last three years. At three years, I took a break from music. And this is kind of like how I evolved since then, you know, from all the stuff I've been through, what did I learn from it? The this is a growth type album, man. So, so it's just about life, man. Um, I already got a video out for the single for the Evolved album. This um, song called Higher. So um, that's out now and it's on YouTube. Um, 
And I mean, Facebook, you can go to my Facebook page, Rich Nicholas out there as well. So that's the lead single for the project, um, single called Higher. So it just talks about kind of just just elevating, man, going going higher in, in everything that we do. So um, I'm I'm in the process of trying to pick the next single, kind of kind of see which way I want to go with it. But it'll be a video for that as well. Also has his own label, Amp Records. Cause you're still doing that too, right? Kind of, sort of. Like I, I, I'm battling with that. Like, so I still, I still, I still keep it going. Still do little mm -hmm. stuff with it. Um, I haven't managed artists in a few years. Uh, it, it, it became a task. Yeah, that, 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 that it started becoming a little bit less enjoyable. So you know, when I took a break from music, I took a break from all of that too. Okay, but. Um, Every time I'm out and I'm at concerts or I'm at some local stuff and I hear some, some new talent, like my ears still be itching for it. So, so I don't know, man. You know, <laughs> keep your ears open, man. It might it might jump back out. See, translation. I'm a father of daughters. When I start having more free time, I'm gonna get back <laughs> that to too. that too. I'm man. a father of daughters. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, yeah, so I, man. I get that. That that um, too, man. That was originally what made me kind of. You know, step away from music for a little bit. When once I had my girls, it was just like definitely twins, bro. Like it, it yeah, just yeah. it was so much That's going on, and trying to how to how to balance everything, work, life, family, trying to how to balance all of that together. And it was like, man, I could I really couldn't figure it out, man. It felt like I started feeling bad if I had to leave from shows and they mm -hmm. sitting there. So it, it it just like I had to kind of step back when something new come in life. Sometimes you got to just step back, assess everything and deal with stuff in priority stages man so then once i kind of got a hold on how to how to how to be a father then it was easier for me to go back to passion you know i trust me being a dj i understand because i'd be booking gigs and be like man fuck your soccer game i'm about to go make this money <laughs> i was like uh but you be looking for daddy at these games yeah man so i had to learn okay because i have people call hey you do one nope your daughter got a soccer game if you change the time I can beat it. Otherwise, can't do it. Can't do it. But I definitely feel you on that. Hey, let me ask y'all both, both the same question because, you know, I got a production company, so it's a lot different. I'm the man. You don't roll an inch of film without me. So I don't have to have a schedule like y'all do. So I want to ask y'all, how has the pandemic messed with you DJing and you putting on shows? Man, I mean, pan pandemic, you know, did it for everybody, man. I kind of, it kind of put everything on hold. But, you know, what what it did give me is a sense is a time to really sit back and focus on my craft of, as a writer. So I think for anybody, you know, who does anything like that, even I think from DJing, it just gives you more time to really practice your craft. Yeah. So since you kind of was at home, like it really gave me time to, I didn't have to rush a project out. I really could take my time and, and get better. You know, for me as a writer, I think reading always helps, you know, develop develop your writing skills. So just, just spend more time for me just doing that. And I really just got start back kind of doing shows. Um, I did one about a month ago and one this past weekend. So just now getting back into that. For me, the pandemic gave me vacation. Because wasn't nobody calling, wasn't no gatherings happening. So, but I love music so much. And I was having so many gigs during the week, weekend. You know, you leave your day gig because, hey, we ain't we in Kansas City. You ain't about to make a lot of money doing what we do. So you got to have that day gig. So this is like the side hustle love. And I was kind of getting burnt out. So it was kind of at the right time because I was doing uh, homecomings and proms and stuff. And them kids get on your nerves. So, you know, it gave me a time to recharge and just be like, okay, I'm ready to do this again. And then, you know, once, as everything started opening back up, then my phone started ringing again. But before that, I just kind of enjoyed the peace and quiet. And then that's when, like I said, I just got to listen to more music, kind of got back into music, started making playlists on Spotify and stuff like that. Just find different ways to appreciate music again. Because at some point, you'll get doing it so much, you'll like, you'll take it for granted and not even care for real. That's real. So, Reese, if you could collab with anybody out there, anybody, any genre, who would it be? Man, it it it'll have to be a few, man. If I if I had to pick, it it would definitely have to pick a few. Like, 
Um, I mean, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, before you answer, Brian, let me, let me let me take Richard's question and, and stretch it a little bit. Who would be your fatal five to rap with to where the song it'd be a number one song, but you have it with these five? Who's that probably like like this is my Wu Tang? Man, like I'm gonna have to have Jay, man. Like I gotta have Hope, like, <laughs> like I, I got to, man. Like I've been that like I've been a Hope fan for, for a minute. So Jay, man. He gonna make an icon no matter what he touched. So Jay, um, I'm a huge Jay the Kiss fan. Okay. So definitely Jay the Kiss. Um, over these years, I've I've grown into a huge Joe Button fan. So I would definitely put Button. I would I would try to pull Button out of retirement and get him. And then um, I love singing. So her would have I would have to go grab her. Her? Yeah. I, I will find a way to make it work. Like, I, I, I love her music, man. Um, I feel like she can cross over almost into any genre and, and make, thing, make things a hit. And then um, it's, it's a toss-up between the last two because it goes singer again. It'd be between um, Ozzyon. She's, kind of, she's kind of a newer singer coming up on, on it. Ozzyon or Snow Allegra. Huge fans Snow of both Allegra, of them. People sleeping on us. People sleeping yeah. on Snow Allegra. And then, I mean, just my all-time great, if I could add a six in there, I don't know how it works. He's a straight crooner R&B, but everybody know I love Dave Hollister. So if I ever got a chance to do a song with Dave, I would definitely yeah, do it. You would definitely, if he could <laughs> give a, a, a special appearance on a Dave Hollister song, the nigga would retire after that. I would. I'm, I'm done. Y'all can have it, man. Like, I'm good. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm disappointed you didn't say Nas or Kendrick, because I've listened to, and if y'all don't know, Reese has a podcast. I love the name of it, Talk That Ish. I love the name. I love the dudes on there, but they be on some bullshit music, and I'm waiting on them to let me come on there because these <laughs> niggas don't know music. And you tell Los, I'm coming. For, Los, I, me and Los have a love hate in my oh, mind. He just out. don't know it yet. Time out, yeah. time out, time out. I've been looking at you, Reese. I'm like, I didn't see this thing somewhere before. And then Are you, you haven't listened to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've sent them links before, and he's like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I, yeah." I told you I like good content. Yeah, right. They be on there, and they they don't appreciate Kendrick. They don't appreciate uh, Nas like they should. So I'm nope. not surprised. Not. But, no, I'm actually surprised though, because Nas is one of Los' favorite rappers. So Los would definitely choose Nas. I thought you'd have went more soulful with like the three stacks and an Anthony Hamilton and whatever. Because a lot of your a lot of your songs, you know, they from here, you know, because my whole thing is I like songs to where it talks to me. To right. Where you can feel where that person's coming from. So if I close my eyes, you paint that picture and I see what you're talking about. So I mean, I'm but that, surprised you can go a little bit more soulful. But that that's kind of why I pick who I pick, kind of because I feel like they can do both. Like if I feel like if I needed a song to talk to you like that, they could give you that. Um you know, if you really listen to her, she, she'll give you that, you know, she'll give you that, you know, black empowerment type music, but she'll give you, you know, some vibe type stuff too. Yeah. And same same thing with Jada. Like Jada, Jada and Joe Button definitely is an emotional rapper, period. If you really listen, to, it's, it's all stories telling from him. Jada so. showed his in verses. Jada yeah. let you, if you didn't know about Jada, verses let you know. Yeah, like, so... Did you watch the one this past Sunday? I didn't. I forgot all about it, man. I'm, I hate that I missed it, man. Them le the legends, man. I, I hate I'm that on I missed YouTube it. And I'll post the link on Facebook. Bad. But Big Daddy Kane and uh, Karis One. Karis One made me. Uh, I was like, man, all you got to love gotta get you get it, get it. I don't want to hear that. But Karis One had a show, and I was like, I'm gonna have to check them out, man, because I, I've listened to KS KRS One periodically, but I never really gave them my ear ear like that. See, so I would definitely kind of. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm old school. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Gray is on display. I'm old school. <laughs> That's a nice hat you got on, Reese. That's a nice hat. I just want you to know that. Appreciate it, man. It's all right. Uh, but KRS-One is one of the ones. He's a Raiders fan. That's why I did that. <laughs> hey. He's like big at coaches. <laughs> hey, you know, hey. Hey, I told you, Rich Passaccia is a great man. <laughs> we didn't forgot about everything before that. Oh, okay. But no, man, I, I, every person I've talked to, man, like from, you know, the generation before me, man, they they they, they, they big up on how KRS-One, yeah. from a lyrical standpoint and all that, yeah. was one of the greats, man. So I definitely give them the respect as one of the pioneers of it. So I really want to go back and check it out more 
with a with a with a lyrical ear now, you know that that Check I am where I'm at now. A lot of the old schoolers, because first of all, they didn't have the production techniques that are out there now, too. That's true. They only had what they have in their hands, so to speak. So they had to do more with less, and you can kind of see that shine if you look at a lot of earlier rap rap groups and uh, solo artists. Um, Obviously, you probably won't like them all, but there's still something that you can pick up out of each one. Absolutely. Definitely the one agree. Thing I do like about it, I give credit, is if you didn't know hip hop before 2010, you know, a lot of the young ones would be watching verse and stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. They gave you an 80s breakdown in New York hip hop because everybody was bringing out somebody. Because I know when Buckshot came out, I was like, oh, that nigga's still alive. They and bring out everybody. Was watching, I was like, who the hell is that? Right. So like, there was lessons that was given because they was they brought everybody, they did different songs with or whatever. And it was it was a good show. It was a real good show. I mean, it's needed, man. Like we, you got you gotta you gotta respect the pioneers and the ones, you know, that paved the way, you know. And really set set the stone. I mean, without none of them, I wouldn't have a voice or a CD to drop, honestly. So true, very true. You know. So back going back to your music, or whatever. I know you independent, basically. You know, I don't. I hate to say local, but you're a local artist, yeah. or whatever. Being local, what's considered a success? What you drop? I know you like this ain't gonna go platinum or anything like that. Although you never know. But what do you consider a success? Like for me now, where I'm at now and making music, like I make music honestly for my enjoyment kind of now. And it's all about telling a story about, you know, I feel like anything that I've I've been given or anything like that I've been through is it, to help somebody else. So when I when I when I do music now and I put my story into music, success for me is simply if one one person, two people hit me up, like, man, that really helped me. Or man, dang, man, you're going through some type of stuff that I went through, man, and, and hearing you pour it out like that, man, helped me be able to get through it. Or somebody just saying, hey, man, that's a great song, man. I love vibing it, man. That, that was dope. like, that's success for me, just being able to, to reach people. I think music is all about reaching people. And so if a song was to blow up, cool. You know, if that's what's in the car, if it's not, I'm okay with that. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. the one, like, I'm, I'm never being the person that wanted to be driven by money. So my, my whole focus ain't never being like, Man, I'm gonna do this so I can make a million dollars. If it happens, and that's what you know, God got in the cars. I'm cool with that. If it's just to touch a couple of people's lives right here in Kansas City or through some other states, I'm cool with that. So I can respect that. Yeah. Okay, so real quick, I know we didn't talk about artists that you want to work with, but I'm gonna throw you a curveball. What artist, if they tapped you on the show and said, "Hey, I want to collab." Would you say absolutely not? <laughs> I don't care how much money is on the table. I, I don't want to do it. I mean, really, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm a, I'm an okay fan. I'm learning to try to adjust my ear to some of this new stew stuff. So like yeah. the young thugs, the, the little babies, like all that, it's not, it's not my lane. So, yeah. you know. I think, and then, I mean, and def definitely, I, mean, I don't care who it was, even if I like you, if, if it's a song that kind of goes against my values and stuff like that, I'm, I'm good on it, you know, so, but like some of the new school mumble rap type stuff, like, I probably would just shy away from, definitely if it would, you know, just didn't fit me. That's like right now, bro, Sunday I DJ a 18-year-old birthday party. <laughs> Oh, it was, yeah. I'm glad it was only two hours, but I it felt bad that her mom only paid for two hours, but it was an interesting two hours, and then I left out, I don't know if you heard of this artist, uh, Thundercat? No, never heard of him. Listen to us, go on YouTube. Yeah, that's all I know is a Thundercat but, cartoon. Yeah, but go on YouTube and type in Thundercat Do-Rag. That Thundercat song gets stuck in my head from Sunday. Oh, okay. And when you see it, you are going to die laughing. It God bless you for wanting to possibly collaborate with some of these artists because it's just you sit looking like how oh, where the mind blown. Just, just yeah, mind. We had an episode of the podcast on that called All Style and No Substance. Yeah. 
And that's for me. Like I like music with substance, even if you know it's a it's a up tempo party track. Like still, I'm I'm a substance guy at heart. So like, like I I feel like the new the new guys it's it's a it's an arena for them. It's a space for them. So I don't want to come across like there's no space in hip hop for them. It just ain't for me. Yeah, just wait as your daughters grow up and they start developing their ears. Man. You really gonna be mind blown because my daughters <laughs> told me Tyler the Creator is great. We almost I, went on 435. I know some people my age that think Tyler is, is amazing. I mean, he's cool. He's cool, yeah. He's he cool. Cool tracks. But to say he's amazing, I was like, that's, that, that's the truth. <laughs> Let me give you a tip. Because, you know, I'm a daddy, too. My child is older. Anytime you get one of these whack artists to come out here and your kids come out, oh, this is the greatest, all you got to do, take your pick. Pull out some Chuck D or some Tupac. Let them listen. They will never come at you again telling you about Tyler the Creator or anybody else is the greatest. They just won't. That's all. I will admit the birthday girl that DJ for, apparently she was a huge Tupac fan because somebody gave her a painted picture of Tupac holding a gun. I was like, this is what you get for birthday gifts? <laughs> <laughs> that birthday party was something different. Oh, man. Well, you've had a lot of different DJ gigs this year. I would yeah. say that. I, I, I goes where the money That's is. That's the I, thing about DJing. You got to be crazy versatile in your ear. Bro, I just did, I didn't put it on Facebook or nothing, but a month ago, I did a fucking yacht party. I did a regatta for a yacht club. All 80s hair band. <laughs> <laughs> and they was getting it. <laughs> they danced more than any other black party I've done, which was I crazy. Told you they would. I dan I like I, I DJ one time an older uh, like well not not about they a little bit young like my age but it was um a white a white wedding and mm -hmm. they were big country fans and so you know they sent me a list of stuff they and I had to go start listening to country music kind of film and yeah. I end up I'm, I'm now a fan of some country music because I realized like there's some good country songs out there. Yeah, but, you got hey, to when I got that Chris, playlist. Chris on. Y I love Chris Stapleton. Y'all never heard of Chris Stapleton? I love Chris Stapleton, man. Yeah. Tennessee whiskey is one of my favorite yeah. songs. Yes, it is. I had to play that the wedding about three weeks ago. Yeah, man. It's so more the, blues than country, but hey, it really is. Yeah, he got that soul. Chris Stapleton got a soulful voice. Oh, yeah. hey, he he really does. Now I just want to say this on a, a personal selfie. You know, when you need voiceover work, your voice free. Just let me know. You know, if you need me to do that, that big room talk over a song, just give me a call. You know, I got oh, you. Man, man, man. I got you. You know, give you that. You know how big rude that deep antidote for outcast or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I know you talk for you. I'm I'm gonna use you, man. We're gonna make something happen. All right, just I'll let you call it. So I'm trying to diversify my bonds. I ain't mad at it. All right, well, um, I think we about to be wrapping this up. I know we're about to be coming. So switching subject. Your music's coming out, everybody get it when it comes. We also I know you a sports fan. Mm -hmm. So since but we ain't gonna talk football, we do that all the time, but you're a basketball fan. Tonight, the NBA tips off. What is your geriatric Lakers going to – oh, my bad. What are the Lakers going to do this season? I mean, I, I feel like, of course, the, I feel like they'll finish, you know, top top four of the West. Um, strong, 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 strong chance of championship depending on health. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. I think um, with these, these people, it's a way to – since they are kind of cool and friends, mm -hmm. egos will go to the side a little bit because I think they all just want to win. So – I think if, if health permitting, there'll be a force in the West. I'm so conflicted on that team. Yeah, Rich is a Laker fan. You know, too, so. I'm a huge Laker fan. Mm -hmm. Can't stand LeBron. Uh, yeah, that's me. So I'm not a Le I'm not a LeBron fan. I'm a Laker fan, so I root for him now because I kind of got I I got to. If the next four <laughs> years they they go championship list, I'm good with that. Yeah, let LeBron let LeBron retire or go off and do whatever he wants to do. And then take the lottery picks and just go on ahead and, and go rebuild. The problem is going to get y'all at least one more, I think. I just don't know if it's going to be like with this. I was listening to all the smokes of basketball edition today, and they had Paul Pierce on there. And Paul Pierce said it perfectly. Their roster isn't as remnants of Gary Payton and Carl Malone. I said, yeah, that, that's about right. But then he also was like, all them all stars. They need to treat it like an Olympics game. Like they when they play the Olympics, 
and defer, hot man get off or whatever. Yeah. It's like AD has to step up. AD has like, to be the man. For, the, for, for this to work, every, AD has to be the star of the team. Actually, I just don't know if he's still roster, like it. Their roster is more like the Portland Trailblazers from 99-2000. I like that. A lot of stars. The Jailblazers? Yeah. True. And they didn't win the title. Ain't you none know, the problem that. was with the Trailblazers. Rasheed Wallace didn't want to be the star. I think AD is out cut from that clock too. Yeah, a a a D don't dominate like he like to me like he's capable of night in and night out. I think he picks and chooses too too many times when to be present. I so wish I wish Boogie was still healthy like he was with Sacramento days. So if you could switch him with AD, Boogie would gladly take over and kill. And AD doesn't have that heart to kill. And LeBron, yeah. he can only do it. LeBron can kill in spurts. He can't do it a full 82 games now. No, nah, not no more. And if they rely on that, that's where the problem go come. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see, man. It's going to be interesting to see, man. Like, I, I wouldn't put no money on the Lakers championship. You know, it's like, can they make it? You know, yeah, I think they can. Will they? I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't put money there to say so. So, nah, I don't know. Well, you know, I'm me being a Knicks fan, I can't say much. Us making it to the playoffs is a championship. So, you know, I'm and trying I, to see if we can go back to back. I actually long for the days the Knicks turning around. I think the Knicks is so prevalent to basketball. They are by itself that having them even back in even just having them in the playoffs last year was what was, was a big. Big fine just for the league. So I want to see them continue to have success. Yeah, for the Nets to be on top and the Knicks struggling. That would be like the Clippers on top and the Lakers struggling. Right. It's, it's tough. not supposed to happen. It ain't supposed to happen for the league. Just like when the Nets got their own arena, I was like, when they got the old brand new, so I was like, that just don't seem right. And we still in MSG, not nothing new, ain't been revitalized or nothing. It's a, it's a, still land, it's a landmark. Money. Yeah, it is. It is. Need to be retired, but it, it's definitely one. Yeah, it's my time for upgrade. You know that ain't going to happen. Right. Yeah, no time probably. soon. They'll be, like, be like them Chiefs. They'll remodel the stadium before you. Right. Hey, right, we're not leaving Arrowhead. What we need to go for? You don't have to. Y'all just remodeled it. If you yeah, you yeah, yeah, keep making it better. Y'all made, made it the, the, uh, the little brother of the fishbowl. Because from the outside, it did look like a little mini sprint center. Right. There you go, Hayden. We all just got a stadium. Oh, I'm not hating because I love our stadium. Yeah, because y'all got that club in the end zone. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm going down into the Lakers Chiefs. I mean, to the the Raiders Chiefs game in Vegas. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see what the stadium is. Right, make sure you got your vaccination. You can't uh, get in without it. Yeah, you can't I do. Get in without it. I got it. Oh, you good? You good to go then? Let me tell you, yeah, you know you're a Chiefs fan. You're gonna enjoy the experience. That's what that's what I'm going for. I, I really, I me, and my brother, and my pops going down there. We're gonna act. That's gonna be dope. Yeah, we got tickets to the game and everything, so we're gonna we're gonna check it out. So if you don't mind me asking, how much was y'all tickets to the game there? I know tickets to the game here was drive ass high last time I looked. I want to say, shoot, for the tickets to play the, the go there, I want to say we paid about five a piece. Oh, so it's the same here. Right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah about, about right. five a piece. When uh when's the game there? We got what how I think it's no it's a Sunday night game. I got so the, I want to say uh, November 14th. Right it is the 15th or 14th? 14th. It is the 14th. Yeah, 14th. Yeah. See, I worry because you know we don't do good on primetime games. That's I worry about that. And we man. That's our Achilles <laughs> series on primetime games. Hey, man, hey, man bring, bring me back on here after we win so I can have a talk. <laughs> hey, hey, once you're a guest on here, you always welcome to come back. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Bring... Hey, I already got a guest on here that's scheduled to come on after he owes me this debt when we uh, <laughs> beat him the first time. See, me and Richard have a bet on the season because I won last year a bottle from them, which yeah. I'm still – no one – was it beer or a bottle? You won a six-pack. A six-pack, six okay. Because the Raiders didn't make the playoffs like I knew they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, my cousin, he's lost a bottle of Crown Apple to hey, me because he's an Eagles two, fan and we beat them. Six and two. Yeah, you know, I ain't worried about y'all. I got another bet I'm about to win. Well, I won other bet because uh, what Nelson on me now, Uncle Nears, I think it was. Yes, he does. Yeah, he owed me a ball of Uncle Nears because we beat him again. You know, these Eagles fans just don't be learning. Yeah. And so me and Richard got a bet overall that the Raiders going to make the playoffs. I don't see it happening. So I'm waiting on him to give me my bottle. But here's the thing. It's like I tell him. You don't go 6-2 and two and then 6-3 and three 
and fall out of the playoff picture three years in a row. They learned that lesson. They not going to fall this year. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, like, they, I don't if, know. Like If you look at all four wins, they've been against playoff teams. They will get up to the occasion. We're gonna see how they finish. They they you know, I gotta just see how they finish. They so got I'm, they, I'm, they, not, they, I'm they, not even gonna lie to y'all. After they get that sixth victory, I'm gonna be sweating until they get that seventh. <laughs> yeah, they got they got like they got the tools to do it. I I I, I just I still don't believe in Derek Carr when it comes down to it. Really? He's gotten better. Did you not watch the game last week? I did. You know, I, I'm still like I'm I am not a like, I'm not a Derek Carr believer. Like, I have no faith in this man to get y'all to the playoffs. And I don't know why people say that about Derek. He hasn't done anything wrong. I mean, but he hasn't done anything great. Or right. <laughs> like, like I, I just don't – I don't see it. Like, I still think the Chiefs and Chargers are the teams to beat in, in, that, in that. And I've seen how the Chargers look Sunday. But I still think the Chargers – They did. I still think the Chargers are better, are better than the, um, the Raiders. Hey, if we had any kind of run game going when we played them, it would have been a different game. But our running backs have been injured. Our line has been decimated. Yeah. I like Jacobs. I tell you this season, you Jacobs is going to be suspect. Once got healthy. Jacobs is nice. I like Jacobs. Yeah, he just – he his his injury profile doesn't like him. Yeah. That's what it falls down to. First time this season, we used King and Drake like we're supposed to use King and Drake. Don't yeah, I was wondering that what that move was about. Give I was toss, like – Give him a toss out of the backfield. Honestly, losing Gruden might have been the best thing for you. That's what I said on last week's show. Yeah, that might have. Been. He's gonna play without having to look over his shoulder or listen to that headset. Yeah, that might that might be the best thing for you. Yeah, sometimes I think for us, I kind of want Andy to take the back seat, let the enemy do his thing. Because you seen when we won that that first game, the enemy was run heavy. Yeah, and that set the tone. Like I know Mahomes got the arm and everything. Sometimes to put that arm on ice and let them boys in the backfield do their job. If they're they going to keep playing. Mahomes because, all right, I don't know if y'all familiar with the report from his mother. She had to, you know, chime in on social media because, you know, Chiefs fans are a little salty every time something goes wrong. Right. Pick. And she's talking about the NFL needs to change the rule on interceptions. Really? Right. That's Come ridiculous. On. Well, the first problem is somebody's talking to her, his mama like she ain't bored. <laughs> That's uh, the first problem. You know, like interception's an interception, when, man. Like when Gazelle went crazy for Brady, she don't play, but yet y'all got a mic in front of her and she's going off. Right. It's all about clickbait selling. That's what it boiled down to. But if you look at that situation, his soon to be wife, and I think his little brother too. Yeah, and always doing something, and it's like, please, can y'all just like stay sit down, the camera. just stay away, from, stay like, like, stay out the light, the limelight. Like, this this ain't your show. Exactly. You know, when you used to having money, that's how you act. Yeah, I guess if I had 500 million, I'd have a whole pe- bunch of people around me talking crazy, <laughs> too. So, yeah, and I told you, I get 500 million, I'm wearing all gold from head to toe, like, I'm gonna get you something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm acting a plum fool. Alert. Platform shoes? Hey, I'm being, no, I ain't got no platform shoes. I'm just like Rodney Harrison. I'm going to have somebody holding my umbrella. <laughs> you go, just like how Snoop got somebody on the payroll to roll joints, you on the payroll just to hold my umbrella when it's raining. I ain't mad at him. Hey, just side note before Rodney Harrison did it, uh, Puffy already had somebody doing it for him. I'm Where sorry, Benny it's Sean nowadays. Combs now, but it was Puffy back then. <laughs> and there would never be anyone like him. He was one of one. Right. Much. Yeah. All right, so we got about five minutes left. Uh, just a couple just random questions I'm going to ask you, Reese, just because what's in your rotation right now music-wise? What you rocking to? I mean, um, lately I've been rocking to um, – I've been on that new Drake. You know, I've been giving that a little listen. Um – uh, the singer by the name of Jay Howe, been listening to some of his new stuff, um, Ozzyon. And um, really, I've been more of a playlist person, man, just kind of building my own playlist and, and, and doing stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so that, you know, still Joe Budden is still rotating heavily in, um, in her. Okay. And Jada. Um, Jada's been in my rotation heavy lately. Okay. 
Uh, Rich, you can jump in whenever. Next question. Um, if you knew the town, where's the place you gonna tell somebody they gotta go eat at? Cause I know you a foodie. Where's the place somebody gotta go eat at in Kansas City? Man, um, Firebirds. It's a restaurant off 135th. Really? And Lee Summit. No, nah, it's uh, it might be one of Lee Summit. The one I went to was off 135th and no. And it's amazing. Okay. Like one of the best steaks I've had in a long time. It's, it's one in Lee Summit too. It's right? called it's one Lee Summit right off of uh where you know all the stuff is where um our thirst our oh, chicken stuff is. Yeah, okay, yep. Yeah, it's called Firebirds. So you said the steak was good there. Yeah, the steak was fire, man. It was great. Really? So you saying the best steak in the city? It's one of the best steaks I've had in a long time, man. I know the best steak I've ever had in the city was Ruth Chris. Ruth yeah, now Ruth Chris here. steak was good. Um, Marina, um, it used to be Marina Grog and Gala. They didn't change the name to like I think it's like Marina Seventy Seven or something like that now. Blue I know you're talking about. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, they got a real good steak there too. Oh, okay. All right. So here's one I've been I, I, I've been waiting y'all do another music episode that, to ask y'all, but so I just ask you directly because I got mine. I want to know what yours is. Since you're a Jay Z fan, what's his number one song in your opinion out of his catalog? What's that one song that signifies him? Man, to me, one of my favorite Jay Z songs, um, and it's because I'm 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 a storyteller at, at heart and love that. It's probably Meet the Parents. Really. Yeah. For Meet me, the, Meet the Parents is one of my favorite cry. days on. For me, it's Song Cry. Song Cry is amazing. Yeah, because the that, if not that, Beach Chair. Yeah, that's dope, too. I, the, I, I, Song Cry is definitely top three. Yeah, because that opinion. one right there, the way it's stripped down, the story he tells. Yeah. You feel that pain. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I love I love strong Song Cry. You can't go wrong there. Can't go yeah, wrong with the blueprint out of here. The Blueprint albums is, is class. Yeah, that I think that might be the best in this catalog. Yeah, I agree. All right, so I'm, I'm trying to go back to what we talked about earlier in music because uh, I was trying to get you to uh, throw a different uh, person out uh, when I asked you about who you want to collab with. Mm hmm and you mentioned some hip hop uh, artists and you mentioned some singers. And we did get on the subject of country. The answer doesn't have to be country, but who would you collab with that's not in the hip hop or R&B? Um, classic rock, rock, country. Man, if I could make it happen, now definitely. I'm open you up. Chris Stapleton, if I had to go, you know, far as country, he's probably the biggest artist I listen to outside of, you know, R&B, hip hop. Um, Boney James. Mm, nice. That's a good one. Nice. If I if I can get some type of jazzy feel the way to make that happen, I would definitely uh, collab with Boney James. My uncle introduced me to Boney James. Yeah, I love Boney James. Bad boy. Love, yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, that that's that's the kind of curve I thought you would throw right there. I didn't yeah. see that one coming. That's good right there. Yeah, I love Boney. I love I love him, man. He's, he's nice. My grandma put me on. <laughs> Yeah, that, that definitely was a good one. I'm trying to get Kevin to open up his music tomorrow. I listen, it's just my my issue is I listen to music, I listen to everything because I'm not getting a call about everything. It's gonna be like if I get a call about it, then I shift my gears toward it. Otherwise, I'm just trying to stay current what I know the phones right. go ring for. So it's kind of like a slippery slope in some regards. Yeah, I can see that. All right, so last question. Then I'm gonna, we're going to let you go, Reese. I know what, what you're sipping on. I see you got – that ain't no Kool-Aid glass you got. This, this, this Crown Apple, actually. Okay. I I, I know a Crown when I see it. I yeah, have a Crown Apple. A crown of sewer. Yeah. <laughs> on no, that no. note, we're going to let you go. We that, appreciate that's short you. short talk for he's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate a little little something every now and then. All right, one more time. Actually, what is the album going to be drunk? Alcoholics go to the meetings. Drugs, no. <laughs> um, album going to drop either. I like, I don't have a exact date yet, but either late November, like like last last week in November, or first first week of December, like kind of right in that two week range. I'm uh -huh. still finalizing some stuff. Got a couple more features. I got to get get their verses on and stuff like that. But it, it's definitely almost done. All right, man. Like Appreciate that. you coming on.
I mean, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Appreciate you. You come right, back man. anytime. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate y'all. Take care. All right, Kev. Washington State uh, had their football coach fired because he refused the COVID vaccination. They're uh, four and three, so it wasn't like they had a losing record. Uh, it is starting. Yep, it's, it's the way of life. That's what's about to happen. All right, continuing in football, we got some ups and downs in our leagues. In the fantasy league, yes, sir, I finally got off the snide and won my first game. Who did I beat? Some team called Supreme Team. You know about them? Yeah, you got me. My receiver sold me out. It happens. Know. Our final score was 128 to 123. Only five points separating us. If you looked at all the other games, no other game in the league had less than a 13-point margin. They were all blowouts. So yeah. we was about that business this week. Since there was no defense played in that game, that kicker was big for you. Pretty much. And uh, A.J. Brown actually showed up toward the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up next, uh, I've got Lex. Who is three and three? So maybe I can get two in a row. We'll see. You've got Tony, who's only one and five. So you have a huge chance to get back in the win. I, I ain't counting nothing for nothing. I'm just trying to get wins to get into the playoffs. Hey, there you go. In our picks league, magically I dropped to eighth place. Uh, I have 63 wins out of 68. 68 is the uh, first place team, so I'm five back. Well, I remained five back. I was five back last week, but I've dropped to eighth place instead of sixth place. You moved up. You are now in 19th place with uh, 60 victories. So you are catching up. I'm trying. You still got a long way to go. It can happen. Before we close it out, I want to talk about the AFC West. Denver's at Cleveland. Who you got? Denver, because Johnny's hurt, and they're talking about trading Odell. So. It's, that's Denver's game to lose. I agree. Kansas City at Tennessee. This, this, Kansas City is going through a revenge tour for other teams. And Tennessee's hot right now. If they throw the ball in the second half like they all game, we're going to lose. So I'm going to give Tennessee the nod. The Chiefs are ranked number 30 against the run. Who does Tennessee have? Derrick Henry. Yeah. That's the thing. We're going to stop him. It's going to be the pass that's going to kill us. All right. Philadelphia at Vegas. Y'all should win that easily, hands down. Well, let's hope so. Or else I'll hear about it from Nelson. Oh, without a doubt. But y'all should win that. The light bulbs have the week off. So they need it after the beat down they took. I agree. They got to restart. We're to start today. Ravens have the bye week. Uh, the Chargers will play the Steelers. The Titans would play the Raiders, and the Bills would play the Bengals. On the outside looking in are the Broncos, Chiefs, and Browns. In the NFC, the Cardinals would have the week off. Tampa Bay would play the uh, Vikings. The Packers would play the Saints, and the Cowboys would play the Rams. Well, just right now up here in the NFL, the teams to beat are the Cardinals and the Ravens. That's it. Everybody else is playing for third. If you say so, but if we end up with the same record as the Ravens, guess what happens? We own that tiebreaker. But we as of right now, you're not the hot team. The Ravens are hot right now. The Cardinals are hot right now. I'm yeah, looking at what's going on right now. But when we beat them, we were the hot team. We just got to get that back. Key word in the sentence is win. And not win W-I-N, but W-H-E-N, when it matters. Yeah, and, and, and when it matters, this isn't actually week seven. It's going to be week 13, 14, 15, 16. That's when things are going to matter. It's going to be interesting. I think this extra week is going to be bigger than what people realize in this season. A lot of I think things going to happen. This is going, if it comes the way down, this end of the season goes, this is going to make a break if they keep this 18th game. If you've got clear winners and losers in the division and teams take the week off and play the scrubs, then people will be like, why do we have a 17th week? But yeah. if we got games that matter that final week, everybody's going to be like, man, we should have had 17 weeks years ago. So yeah, so it's going to be interesting. All right, that's all I got. You got anything before we get on out of here? No, that is it. Uh, another good show. Great guest. 
And you know, it's a good one, good Tuesday, you know, but y'all see this on Thursday. So a good Thursday, everybody have a good Thursday. All right, everybody, don't forget, like, share, subscribe with me on YouTube. Um, drop us a line, the two dudes podcast at yahoo.com. Let us know what you want to see here or talk about in the future. Kevin, take us on out. Oh, uh, well, let me first say, I'm glad to see you're, you're out of mourning. I see you back to your, your black and gray for the recording. I'm glad to see the morning has ended, you know, that you and the Chiefs colors just, it, it didn't sit with my soul right. But um, I'm still not going, you know, say the home of the Chiefs to end it because we still not out the murk. We still in that murky water trying to figure it out. So I'm just going to say, hey, holler at your boys, but don't yell. And we'll see y'all again next week if okay. God wants us to. I'm out of the morning. We have a new coach. My namesake, Rich Desatia. And the words of Dave Chappelle, I'm rich, bitch. See everybody later.